Block, Max Cook, Tyler Horsham, Joey Olden. Of course, his nephew is Bulby. That's right. So uh, he's got a little little reason to stick around and watch here for uh, today. I'm sure he's home for the holiday weekend. Well, of course, everybody remembers uh, Ruben Bulby and, sure. of course, uh, Eric and Kyle Young. Verderber, Michael Verderber. That's right. So they've had a long run of basketball coming through the Railer programs, be it boys or girls. Grandma V's probably at home listening to us right now, and she was uh, <laughs> the big reason for all that. Watson's jumper from 15 gets the friendly roll, and it goes down. So Danville comes out quickly and uh, gets it. their uh, deficit cut in half. Now 14-12 Railers. Yeah, the Railers haven't started out well in third quarters either. Bulby in the corner, three on the way. That's not going to get the bounce. Ball's tipped out. Can it be corralled? It can by Watson for Danville. Vikings into the front court. Get a chance to tie here. Got to find Smith. He fires off a three, shoots up an air ball, and Horsham will track it down. Railers have the advantage, so Max looks to run. Gets it into the front court. Now hands over to Gavin. Gavin down the lane, kicks out to Tyler. Top of the key, three. That one's off the right side, no good, but Bulby tracks down the board for the Railers. Two possessions, two threes. So now the Railers will reset to Joey Olden on the right wing. Swings around to Max near the timeline. Cook down the lane, out to Bulby, open three, this is good. Yeah, I've got that one. Good set up by Max Cook, got right down in the middle of the lane. He can take Denzel Smith off the dribble, and he did. And uh, found Bulby, he's, uh, hopefully he gets back on track here after a hot night last night. Uh, that was his first make today. 17-12, Raylor lead is five. That's their largest lead of the afternoon. Butler to ask you. In the corner to Smith, watched by Block. Bob it over to Butler. Butler makes a move. 14-footer. Back rim, no. Watson again, the rebound, and a foul is going to be whistled on Olden as he knocked Watson to the floor. Yeah, Railers just don't look quick out there right now. We're uh, slow to the ball. That was a, a rebound I thought either Joey or Max could have gotten, and our defense just isn't moving like we've, uh, we've seen him move this year. Second on Joey, first team foul. They try to get it in. Knocked away into the hands of Tyler Horsham. Horsham one on three. He'll pull it back out to Bulby. Kicks it down to Max. Down to Bulby who cuts back down the lane and he missed it. Ball loose on the floor. Bulby tried to grab it, but Butler comes out with it for the Vikings. Nice give and go yeah, there. Nice pass. But Bulby just couldn't get it to go down. You can tell there sometimes where Bulby just tries to hurry it uh, inside because he's not used to the, you know, not used to shooting the twos. He's more of a, a three-point guy. And uh, he, he, gets, he gets in there instead of being physical and strong, and, he, and he's got a good body. He's a strong kid. He can jump well. Rather than just attacking the basket, he kind of tries to flip it up there real quick. Shot from Smith was missed. And again, Tyler Horsham was there for the rebound. Butler re called for the foul as he tried to knock it away from Tyler. 17-12, five and a half to go here in the third. Horsham over two. Max, Max drives the right side, kicks it over to Joey. Joey at the free throw line, now gives to Bulby. Max fakes a three, tries to go baseline, does go baseline, tried to kick it out to Joey. Nice ball movement, got it to Horsham, didn't pull the trigger. Being a little patient, a foul is going to be whistled on, on uh, Askew. That'll be his first, second team foul. Horsham will inbound right in front of Greg Alexander. We hit the five-minute mark with the Railers up by five. Third quarter of action. Tyler high post to Gavin. Here comes Bulby popping out. Instead, they go back door to Tyler. Tyler lost it, and Tyler's going to be called four steps. And, Josh, it really looked from this angle that Tyler was looking to kick it back out before yeah. looking at the shot. Well, that's what happens when you're not accustomed to shooting twos, especially right around the basket. He he was, <laughs> I mean, and you couldn't ask for better position to uh, to make a shot, and that's that's the mentality right now of some guys that uh, aren't, aren't from aren't, – really comfortable shooting a two. Um, it's all it's all threes. Bulby tips it into the backcourt. Nice job by Ed, but it's tracked down again by Butler for the Vikings. Four and a half to go. Lincoln 17, Danville 12. Butler watched by Cook. 
Watson turns, 15-footer, won't get the roll. All Railers there for the rebound this time, and Gavin comes out with it. Well, you couldn't ask for a better shot for, for Danville. Get to the middle, Max. Max, pull-up jumper, off no good. Quick shot, rebound to Butler for Danville, and now they look to run. Smith, down the lane, flips sides by block, lays it up and in. Yeah, with a, a wide-open middle, look, I thought Max would take his guy right to the middle and, and get in and chose to... Yeah, goes to uh, get the 15-footer. Max fakes the three top of the key. He's going to take it to the basket. The finger roll won't go down. Contact again, no call. And Danville with a chance to pull even closer. 340 to go in the third. Down by three. Down the lane. Butler, glass good. 17-16 now. Just a one-point lead for the Railers. Railers work it around the perimeter. Gavin back out to Olden. Bulby will fire a three. That's good. Two in a row for Ed. Thank goodness for Bulby here in the second half. So uh, we, we can score. We do, we're not stopping anybody. Gavin knocked it away from behind. Gavin's going to take it to the basket. Lay it up and in. So defense turns to offense, and the Railers back up by six quickly. 2.50 to go in the third. Lincoln 22, Danville 16. Askew, back out to Smith. He's going to drive, kick it back out. Three on the way. That's up and good. Basket by Colin Bailey. The unknown Viking with the number change. Three on the way. Again, that's, Bobby. The, that's the known way with the three. Bobby again. Yeah, he's uh, he's found it again. Thank goodness, because uh, right now the Railers are are uh, dead on defense. We're, we can't stop them. Every time we're getting a three, uh, they're getting something back. So the Railers got to pick up the defense a little bit on this end. Butler, pull up. 13, that's good. He's got four, 25-21. Danville's going to take a timeout with 1.58 to go here in the third. 1.58 left in the third, 25-21. Railers with the lead back in a moment with Lincoln. Railer basketball. Lincoln with the four-point advantage. They had that same margin at halftime up 14-10. Now 25-21, 1.58 to go here in the third. And... Uh, you talked about it, uh, Josh. Thank goodness for Edward Bowlby and his yeah. three-point shooting. Yeah, because we're not stopping him on the on the defensive end. The Raiders got to pick up the intensity on defense, kind of match some excitement that Bowlby's brought to the crowd here. But uh, Danville right now is getting anything they want, and and they're knocking them down. We just haven't been. They've been having open looks, uh, open threes, and um, the defense for the green is not moving. Railers the basketball, four-point lead. Peyton Ebelair in. Nice look inside to Max, who lays it up and in. Good look from Ebelair. Cook lays it off yeah, the glass. Almost like a slip screen. They we ran the same play. Bulby came out, and instead of uh, really setting the screen, Max slipped to the basket, and Peyton made a nice pass right to uh, right to Max. Joey tipped it, but Butler got it before it went to the backcourt. Bailey over to Askew. Out of Butler. Smith on this side now. Bailey looks at the three. Now over to Smith. Minute 15 to go. Smith back over to Butler on the left wing. Bailey, Smith rises up. His three is going to be no good. Askew and Cook will fight for it. Askew comes down with it. He goes in against Butler, gets it back out to Watson, and a reach-in foul is going to be whistled on. The Railers knocking it out of Watson's hand. Yeah, shot goes up on the side, on the, on the wing here, and Max has got to get weak side and, and get that rebound. That's his responsibility, and, and uh, he was just beat to the spot. So an offensive rebound for Danville, and as hot as they are right now, you can't give them any more opportunities than, uh, than you have to. Watson in the lane, turns, gets it back out to Bailey. That previous foul was on Peyton Ebelair, his first, second on the Railers. Both teams with two team fouls. Three on the way, spins off no good, and Gavin high for the rebound with 50 seconds to go in the third. Railers up six with the ball. Yeah, nice to get a some sort of a backdoor, some sort of a lob, any way we can score to extend this lead. Railers got it spaced out pretty well. Ebelair over to Gavin. Down to 30 seconds. Cook, Olden, Block, Ebelair, and Bowlby on the floor for the Railers. 
Down to 17 seconds. Cook over in the right wing to block, gets it back. Down to 10, here we go. Gavin on the right wing, looking down low. Out to Joey. Joey's going to drive, kick it out to Peyton. Peyton, and Peyton's going to be whistled four steps. It looked like he wanted to dump it down low or shoot it. The indecision cost the Railers that possession. 2.2, let's see what Danville can do here, down by six. Bailey flips it over to Butler. Butler will fire at three-quarter court, but I don't think it would have counted anyway. And uh, Danville certainly did not handle that opportunity well either. At the end of three, it is Lincoln, 27, Danville, 21. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. Back at Roy S. Anderson Gymnasium here at Lincoln Community High School and the Railers with a six-point advantage as we get ready to go into the fourth quarter, 27-21. Ebelair, Conradi, Block, Olden, Max Cook on the floor for the Railers, looking to move to 4-0 in the tournament. Block's going to drive the baseline, gets his defenders up, and he's going to go to the line shooting two, and Smith has picked up his third foul. Nice drive by Gavin uh, using Danville's aggressiveness against him. Yeah, that's uh, good things happen for the most part when you get to the basket, and they have uh, they have a little bit more today, and now we're getting to the free throw line for only the third, second and third free throw taken all day, isn't it, Jeff? Mm-hmm. Free throw goes down for Gavin. Yeah, Danville yet to go to the line and blocks it both of the free throws the Railers have taken so far. 28-21. Got them both. Gavin in double figures. He's got 10. Railer lead now eight, the largest of the day. Well, here's where the Railers have been pretty good so far this season. That's in the fourth quarter. Defense generally. Boy, Joey got whistled for a foul, and it looked like Joey right where they had Butler trapped along with Max Cook. Josh, it sure looked like Joey reached over and had all ball. Joey picks up the foul. Yeah. Railer crowd, I think, is giving it to that guy, too, on the uh, sideline. He's right by the coaching staff and all the crowd over there. <laughs> and they were too happy with that call. Tipped away. Max with the steal. Railers with the basketball. Olden now over to block. Railers up by eight. Ebelair into Gavin. Gavin in the lane. Looks one way. Spins out. Joey three. Got it. Yeah. Well, it was good to get it in the middle right to Gavin and let him do something with it. Um, you know, either score on Denzel Smith in the middle or, or kick it out. And you, you've got to get those opportunities where the defense has got to honor the inside. Bailey over to Butler. Railers now with a double-digit lead, 32-21. Smith brings a dribble out near the timeline. Not a lot of movement right now for Danville. The Railer defense has picked up a little bit of intensity. intensity. We're moving, and, and we're all over him now, and, and that's kind of shut down Danville's offense. Butler, his three will go down. Butler now with seven. All in the second half. It's 32-24. Six and a half to go in the contest. Block backs the dribble out, working against Askew. Hands off to Ebelair. Gavin fakes one way, goes the other way off the glass. It would not go down. He did a nice job of uh, using body control to get past. Smith ahead. Watson goes in for the dunk over Block. And we saw the fourth quarter last night, Josh, against Cahokia. This Danville team, they get to playing with emotion and confidence. Well, we saw what happened. They knocked Cahokia off in overtime. Yeah, yeah, they were down quite a bit that game, too. Gavin down the lane, gets his defender up instead, hands over to Conradi, and he misses the easy two. Two easy misses, Smith from the right side. Four, three, back rim, no good. That's a big miss for Danville. Joey with the rebound for the Railers, five and a half to go. Railers up six. Gavin walking the dribble into the front court, hands over to Olden, now to Max Cook. 
Cook brings the dribble to the right side, working against Askew. Picked up his dribble, and a little touch foul is going to be whistled on Askew. That'll be his second, fourth yeah, on the team. Just a fourth on the team, four on the Railers also. So, um, you know, not really a big foul trouble, but uh, both teams got to want to be close before they can get to, uh, to the bonus. It looks like it's going to be a close game throughout. Joey got the inbound pass from Max. The defender slipped. Looked like Joey could have spun right back to the lane, but did not. So the Railers will set up with five minutes to go. Up 32-26. So Max open for three. They left him, and he missed it. Rebound to Smith. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of indecision on that. You know, it wasn't open right away, and he really wanted to pass, and it's tough to get your mind to mind to rethink again. But another steal as uh, Gavin steps in the way, and I think Bailey's problem there was he tried to get it around Adam Conrad. Yeah. That's, that takes a lot. Pretty good trap. So right now Danville uh, having their own difficulties on the offensive end, but the Railers, uh, the same thing. Luckily they've got the six point lead with four and a half to go. Max is gonna go by Bailey. Max to pull up, shoots up ever, everything. Butler the rebound for Danville. Butler ahead to Smith with a nice catch, runs into Conradi, and Smith will go to the line, and he will be will be shooting two, or are they going to say it's out of bounds? Conradi picked up the foul. It's his first. Yep, and it'll be Smith going to the line, shooting two. He has ten. I'm not sure I'd want to run into Adam Conradi. No, he felt that one. <laughs> 421 to go. The lefty, first free throw on the way, will not go down. Well, he hasn't had the second half like he started in the first first half. Uh, he was really really shooting it well from the corner, and, and we didn't get out on him as well. But um, he, he's not playing playing as well as he was, obviously, last night when he had 39 and 16. But even this morning, he started off pretty well hitting two consecutive threes. Bowlby and Horsham back in as the second one does not go down either. Conradi and Ebler. Head to the bench, so you've got Max Cook, Gavin Block, Joey Olden, Tyler Horsham, Edward Bowlby, the starters on the floor for the Railers as we approach the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Railers on top, 32-26. Well, probably our most experience on the on the floor right now, and this is what they said they worked on in the summer, was closing out games. You get a game like this, you, you uh, find a way to win. So many years we, we couldn't find a, find a way to win, and, and uh, they said that's what they worked on over the summer, was, was closing out and extending leads. Horsham hands to Block. Now to Cook. Block on the right side. Gavin's going to take it down the lane. Little scoop shot. It won't go down, but Gavin will go to the line, and he will shoot two more. Yeah, again, the Railers have been, been going to the basket a little more in the last few possessions, uh, but just not been able to get the layups to fall. And I, and I, I really think that if you're not accustomed to doing that and you're not comfortable doing that, uh, you can get there, but uh, we, we just haven't made them. Gavin, three for three from the line so far. Make it four of four as he hits the first. You know, I think I think Gavin and Max and, and, and even Bowlby also, they could average five, six points a game apiece from the free throw line. Second one rolls good. 34-26. Mm -hmm. Three and a half to go. Picked up his dribble in a bad spot if yeah. you're Danville, but they get it into the front court, and now you got to believe it's going to be a number 14 hand, Denzel Smith, yeah. for the rest of the I game. I don't know that they've got a whole lot of experience. Some of their starting guards are out now. And Shot fake got blocked in the air. He drove by. The foul's going to be whistled on Max Cook. That's his second. His second. Butler will inbound on the baseline, 3.14 to go, 34-26, Railers up. Smith thought about stepping into a three, he's going to drive in, pull up jumper over Good block, left it Gavin. short, and there's Horsham again with the rebound. Yeah, Horsham may be leading, leading the uh, rebounding category today. Max hands off to Olden, under three minutes to go, Railers are up by eight. And Josh, you talk about it all the time. Right now, if it's if it's not a layup, you don't take it. Exactly. And and I think I thought Max did a good job last uh, last possession of, of of holding off on a three. He was wide open. But this is uh, this is free throws and, and layup time for the for the Railers right now. Gavin down the lane, kicks it out to Bobby. Bobby right corner three. Shot don't it up it. long. Rebound comes down to Smith for Danville. Yeah, don't need it. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Butler steps into a three and he hits. And that's why you don't need it. They come down and hit a three. You give up. You miss a three and you come down and give them, and that's uh, basically a six-point swing when you could work clock, 
have them foul you or, or get to the free throw line. 34-29, now just a five-point game. Gavin in the high post, bring the dribble back out. Outside the three-point line, right wing to Max. We're down to two minutes left in this one. And timeout's going to be taken by the Railers right in front of the Lincoln bench. A tick under two minutes to go, 34-29. They're taking time. We'll take it with them. 159 to go. Railers up five. You're listening to Lincoln Railer basketball. Back at Roy S. Anderson, Railers on top, 34-29. A close one here. Uh, if you're a fan of college football, a rarely close one going on at uh, the Big House. Uh, five minutes to go in the contest. Uh, Michigan and Ohio State tied at 35. Yeah, what, uh, Illinois and Northwestern North Western today for the final game? Maybe of Beckman's <laughs> Illini uh, career. I think there's some that were surprised they even made it to today. Well, I guess the Purdue win helped, but it, Griffin would have beat them. So under two minutes to go. Railers with the basketball after the timeout. Gavin's going to make a move. Goes by Smith and lays it up and in. Yeah, it's, uh, you, can, you can do that. Butler quickly to the other end answers. So the Railers take a lot of time to finally work to a shot that they get. Danville right down with an easy shot, and Butler's really been the one that's uh, been the difference. He has 12 all in the second half. Yeah, a couple stop and pops for uh, Butler the last few possessions, about 15 feet, and he's, he's drilled them. Block again, down the lane. They don't stop him. He'll go to the line, and he'll be shooting two. Yeah, Gavin's found, uh, Gavin's found an opening there on the right side of the lane. He's taking advantage of it. And he's been the one that's been hitting from the free throw line, uh, too. Really, the only one. Yep, the only... Yeah, the only free throws the Railers have taken so far here today have come from Gavin. First one is good. He's now 6 of 6 from the line. Okay, this is probably where I shouldn't mention that they made their last nine last night. But you did. Well, I said I shouldn't mention it. 37-31. <laughs> free throw up. Thank you, Gavin. Yep, saved you. <laughs> now let's get a stop here this time. 38-31. We've, we've been scoring our end, on our end, but uh, we can't uh, widen this lead if we don't get any stops here. Butler in the corner to Smith. Smith rises up over block for three. He missed it, but Gavin fouled him. Gavin looking at the bench, and uh, Gavin, I think, a little... I'm not sure if Gavin thinks he fouled him, and I'm not sure the coaching staff is uh, disagreeing with Gavin. <laughs> no, I don't think, uh, you know, you generally know when you hit somebody on the, on the hand from a deep, deep shot. Smith will take three free throws. First one on the way. It is up. It is good. 38-32. One oh five to go. Smith with only 11 points here this afternoon. Second one good as well. Even though he struggled though, Josh, I'll tell you, if I were a college coach, I wouldn't mind having somebody like him on my team. Well, and what the nice thing has been, as, as we've seen him now for two years, three years, he's really gotten better every year. Uh, and he's, uh, I think once this guy fills out a little bit, um, he could be a nice nice player. He's, his shot from the perimeter is has gotten better, and that's that's probably what he's going to be in college at 6'7", but he's a, he's a nice athlete, a nice player, plays hard. Missed them both, and a foul is going to be whistled on Danville. 38-33, 57 and a half to go. Got one Danville, number 12. Lester, his first. Alan Lester, that's his first foul, seventh team foul. So it'll be Gavin Block back to the line. Trying to extend that five-point lead for the Railers. Free throw on the way is good. Yeah, good job by Gavin. Late in the fourth quarter, you got to remember, use your legs. You're going to take a little bit extra when you're, uh, when you're winded and he's played as many minutes as he has this week. Eight for eight so far. 
Second one. Good well. Yeah, nice shooter's touch right off the front. So the Railers uh, have done a good job, especially specifically Gavin from the free throw line. We just got to get some uh, a stop, stop here, a steal, a rebound, something. Yeah. 40-33, a seven-point lead, 45 seconds to go. Smith in the corner, back out. You get it to Askew. Askew finds Smith. He's going to rise up for three. Shot it up long. Max took the rebound, and Max is fouled, and he's going to go shooting one in bonus. Got to think it was going to be Butler or uh, Smith for the uh, for the Vikings, and uh, Max was right there. Davin, Gavin did a good job of closing out and, and stayed away a little bit from the uh, from the foul. Thirty-four and a half seconds. All the railers off of the line, other than Joey on the right side. Max shooting one in bonus so far today. Four points for Cook. Free throw up. Yeah, good. Not the offensive game we're kind of been used to seeing Max from as uh, as hot as he was late in the season last year and and had gotten off to a pretty good scoring start uh, this year. But uh, again, steady from the from the point guard position as far as the handling the ball, not turning it over and, and getting us set into what we want to on offense. Cook makes them both, 42-33. Thomas with the fake off the glass, and they're going to say offensive foul. Boldy stepped in, took the charge, so they finally get a shot to go down, and Thomas is whistled for the foul. That was, that was a tough call for Danville there. 26 seconds to go. Railers with the nine-point lead. Block inbounds to Cook. Max dribbles over to Bowlby. Bowlby ahead to Joey. Skips it all the way in the other corner to Horsham. Railers now just trying to play keep away. Bowlby underneath. And that'll do it. Bowlby lays it up and in. 44-33. Butler spins it out. Bowlby gets the rebound. And that will do it as the Railers will move to 4-0 on the season. As they get the victory, the final score... Lincoln 44, Danville 33, improving to 4-0 on the season. Danville drops to 1-3. Again, our final. Lincoln wins by 11, 44-33. We'll be back with our postgame in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. We'll come away with the victory, 44-33. Coach Neil Alexander now joining us here after this fourth win of the season. Coach, congratulations on the win. And... Uh, Boy, another one of those grinder-type games, but the Railers found a way to win, uh, and also it seemed like they found a way to kind of keep Danville giving them hope with the uh, easy shots, uh, come down and take a quick shot on the offensive end, and Danville very good at converting back and scoring, uh, but it uh, seemed like with about four minutes to go, the starters were back in the game, your most experienced players, and it looked like those were the players that really were able to get you the win today. Well, I, I think our guys, uh, you know, again, it was a grind, and, and I think Probably, I, I guess I'm looking at it a little differently now. I think our defense is forcing people to be that way. Uh, I think we're we're a pretty good defensive team. Uh, we still got a lot of things to improve on. Uh, I thought rebounding. Uh, I don't know how many offensive boards they got today, but four. Uh, you know, that's that's pretty darn good for us, and not allow the second you know shot putbacks. Uh, you know, our whole goal was to find. Uh, Danzel Smith and I thought our guys done a nice job. Uh, a couple times we closed out short on him and gee, you know, he just drills them. Uh, he's a pretty sweet player and uh, uh, you know, he, he was something that we was looking at. Uh, so w we really opened our low post area up by trying to catch him and cover him and you know, he done a nice job. But our defense uh, you know, held him in check and uh, I was worried he was going to hit us for 40 <laughs> like he did last <laughs> night. Uh, I think he's that very skilled that he can do those type of things to an opponent. Yeah, really, when he got in foul trouble late in the uh, second half, he, he never, never really got back into the flow of the game, I didn't think. Coach, or, it, in, and defense was there, and really, the, you know, he had three points there in the fourth quarter, but that was uh, basically from the from the supposed foul on, on Gavin on the three-point line. But, um, you know, the, I, and the big foul was... was uh, Horsham got him on his back on, on a nice box out down in the end and gave him two fouls, and I didn't think he really ever got back into the flow. Yeah, I thought I thought uh, Tyler done a nice job, and yeah. he's one of our more physical players that will get down and he'll put his bottom on the thigh and root people out of there, and, uh, you know, he pretty much done that to him, and, uh, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, done the right things there, and, uh, you know, that's why guys get on the floor is they do the right things, and, they make things happen, and, and uh, you know, he's got some experience at it. 
Coach, we know that uh, Tyler was, uh, it seems like we're just waiting for Tyler to find that rhythm for his threes. He had a couple open looks, but th they didn't go down. But the one thing that you credit him with his experience, as you talked about, he's out there doing all the other things. He's not scoring, but he's creating a presence that you need him out there defensively. Well, yeah, and he's doing things that, uh, you know, I thought he lost 21 there late in the game where he came straight down and pulled up and hit the three there. But for the most part, he's, uh, the last couple of nights, he's done a nice job defensively, and he, he's, he's one of our more physical players that will go down there and mix it up. And uh, I don't know how many boards he had, but uh, probably four or six. five. Six. Uh, you know, that's that's a good output for our guys is to get that many, many uh, boards. So, um, you know, we just got to keep on getting better. And, you know, we don't want to be perfect right now. And, uh, you know, Max Cook's not shooting the ball very well. Uh, Tyler's not shooting it very well. Uh, Edward Bobie is shooting the <laughs> ball really well. So, you know, we got to get them all on the same page. And if, if we do that, uh, we'll be a hard team to guard. And you may need it tonight, Coach. Uh, Cahokia, you know, coming off two performances that uh, we didn't see coming. One getting beat uh, against Danville last night and then getting really beat uh, this morning against Champaign Centennial. So they're either going to turn it on uh, something hard tonight, which you expect they would, or they're going to just barely get on the floor. But, uh, you know, they've, they've still got some players, and, and they can get on a roll. If they get on a roll in the confidence, they're as athletic as, as anybody around. Yeah, you know, we... we uh, uh We've, we've got to be prepared. Uh, you can't expect them to come in here and play like they have the last two. And, you know, they're, they're uh, very talented. And, um, you know, we just we, we, that last game they played this morning, uh, you know, I think they were up 20. Yeah. And they let that thing get away. And, and that's hard, uh, you know. But, uh, you know, that they'll be prepared to play. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure uh, 8 o'clock game, uh, it, it'll be exciting. So it'll be an excellent game tonight. Coach, uh, one of the other things that could be a factor in the con in the uh, tournament is the free throw percentage. Uh, I came in uh, today, I think it was uh, 38 out of 52. Add another 11 of 11, perfect from the line today. Gavin did a great job at the line, 9 of 9. Well, you know, that's important to us. We're, that's part of uh, how we score points is a wide-open 15-footer, and, you know, you got to hit those. So I still feel, and I told you last night, that we can shoot at least 80% as a team. I think we have those type of shooters. So um, I don't know what that amounts to, the, the total for the, the tournament, but, uh, you know, I, I think we're in pretty good shape uh, for the tournament. Uh, we don't have a loss. I, I think maybe Centennial's the only one that has one. You know, so uh, and they got Harlan. So you know, the worst we could do is you know tie with them, and uh, you know we beat them head to head, so that would give us a title. So uh, as the way we look at it, I believe we won the tournament already. So, uh, but that's still not uh, you know we want to win it straight up five and zero oh, and yeah. uh, move to the next game. So uh, our focus is Cahokia right now, and we want to play. And you know we're. We, the kids have got big things, uh, the focus or goals for the end of the year, and this could be a roadblock for them later on in the year as well. So you need to make a statement today. This could be a good game for our seeding in Collinsville also, Coach. They're, they're going to get a chance to see Cahokia a lot, uh, the, the, the voters down in, in uh, St. Louis area, so it would be a nice win. Yeah, it would be, and, uh, you know, I never even thought of that. But, uh, you know, if we could come out and have a good game and, and play very well, um, you know that that would definitely help uh, because there, are, you know, there's a ton of teams down there from that yeah. area, and you know they they know Cahokia pretty well. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and one thing, uh, Darian Nash is a, a very very good coach, and you know I think every year they come up here, they seem to be, you know, have their f troubles and you know they're arguing and things, and by Christmas he has them ironed out to where they're playing pretty good basketball, and and. Uh, you know, they're a very talented team, and, you know, they've got some pieces. They've got to the transfer uh, Ferguson from Belleville West, I believe, uh, number 15. And, uh, you know, he's trying to fit him in. And I, I, I think that's part of what's going on right now with Cahokia is they're just not – the chemistry is not where they want it. And, you know, they'll put that together as time goes on. All right, Coach, we'll let you go and all the – the game film watching and all the talking you've done to the players, they'll get to see firsthand tonight just how tough Cahokia can be. Well, it, it's one where, you know, uh, there's no doubt if, uh, you know, I don't think the parent the rankings come out again until the first of the year. Uh, I think it's just one time preseason prior to, and, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, they've got two losses. There's no doubt 
drop, but you know, right now we still approach it as they're the number two team in the state, and we want to prove a point. And you know, if they got that kind of voting at the beginning, uh, uh, they have to have some skilled players. So uh, we want to come out and try to prove a point tonight. All right, Coach, we'll let you go, and uh, we'll see you back here at uh, 8 o'clock for the finale of the tournament. Okay, thank you. Railers winners today, 44-33. We'll wrap things up here in just a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball.